This is the National Ignition Facility at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in Northern California. It's a multi-billion dollar facility funded by the Department of Energy that's designed to simulate the conditions inside a nuclear explosion, allowing scientists to maintain the nuclear weapon stockpile without detonating any weapon. But it might have equally important civilian benefits. Hydrogen bombs work on the same principle as our sun. They both obtain their power through fusion. At tremendous heat and pressure, hydrogen atoms fuse together into helium and release a huge amount of energy without the toxic leftovers of a fission nuclear power plant. Tapping into that clean energy source has been a long time hope for scientists, and the National Ignition Facility could provide physicists the know-how to finally do it. And all it takes is 192 of the world's most powerful lasers amped up to incredible energy before being focused onto a target about the size of a pencil eraser. We're here at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory with Ed Moses, the director of the National Ignition Facility. Ed, can you tell us a little about the facility? Yeah, this is uh, the world's largest laser. It's the, the world's largest laser in terms of the energy it puts out about a hundred times more than any other laser that has ever been built on Earth. Well, there are three basic goals of NIP. You know, the first is uh, strategic national security. Second, basic science of the cosmos. The third is the long pole in the tent, and probably the one most interesting to the future of our society, could we get clean, carbon-free, limitless energy? That's called fusion energy. This facility now is two years away from demonstrating thermonuclear burn in the laboratory, or fusion. And what we're going to be doing is putting together special types of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium, at very high temperatures and very high pressures for a short time, and getting out energy, as Einstein told us, equals mc squared. If you look at behind me right now, this is the target chamber where all that happens. We have all these lasers, which creates all the energy, but we bring it all into this target chamber to a very small spot, sort of the size of a Tylenol capsule, you know, and focus it down to something about the size of your hair. And using that really high intensity light, we can create the conditions that are of, of interest. So here we're in a situation where we can take astrophysics and instead of doing it through telescopes, watching things that happened millions or billions of years ago, we could schedule a, a sun or solar event or a supernova, let's say next April on April 23rd at four in the afternoon, bring all your diagnostics. So that's something very exciting. Some people think this is a light machine. Uh, I think of it as a data machine, right? It's a scientific data machine. Finally, what we put out are ones and zeros that scientists or other people can use to understand what happened during a shot. And the way we do that is we have around 35 special diagnostics arrayed around a target like porcupine quills that look at the optical light that comes out, x-ray light, neutrons, and other characteristics of how the target is acting. By doing that, we can figure out what happened, whether it agrees with our codes, you know, and understand how to design further shots. Over this last you know, 48 years now, people have been increasing their understanding of what has to be done, the technology has come along, and this laser facility was designed to do ignition. This facility is around uh, 700,000 square feet, and it cost us around $2.2 billion to build this facility. We also did around a billion dollars of research and development on the way to doing it. A lot of experiments have been done on the way to this. There's a lot of confidence that what we have here is built to get the answer. Our goal is 2010 to do our first ignition campaigns. 